support again in the righteous people whether they happen to be from the prophets from the messengers salawatullahi wassalamu alayhim ajma'in or whether they happen to be from the other normal regular religious people so this message khwani about having al ghulu al ghulu is a message that really in reality the khutbah should be about it I think every imam needs to repeat it over and over again so that it will sink into the minds and the hearts of the community that al-ghulu is a mushkila going overboard in individuals al-ghulu we just pray salat al-maghrib and in salat of al-maghrib we read surat al-fatiha and surat al-fatiha is a dua and the delil and the proof that it is a dua after you finish reading Surah Al-Fatiha, the people say, Ameen. So we're asking Allah a number of things. And from what we asked Allah Azza wa in Surah Al-Fatiha is to guide us to the Surat Al-Mustaqeem. So if you want to know one of the proofs where Al-Islam is telling you to stay balanced, Surah Al-Fatiha, the greatest surah of the Quran, the one that you have to read in every single prayer, the Fard prayer, the Sunnah prayer, the Nawafil prayer, the Taraweeh, the Eid, the Janaza, whether the prayer has Ruku or doesn't have Ruku, you have to read Surah Al Fatiha. So the fact that Surah Al Fatiha is the Umul Kitab, it's the Umul Kitab, and it is the greatest surah of the Quran. And in that surah is the ayat where we are always asking Allah, Dina Surat Al Mustaqim. It's a delil of the importance of being balanced being balanced is from the usul of al-islam being balanced with your enemy being balanced when you're angry being balanced when you're sad being balanced in what you eat being balanced period in your ibadah in your dunya be balanced and don't go overboard so from the adilla the imam he starts the chapter off by mentioning chapter 19 bab ma ja anna sabab kufri bani adam wa tarqihim dinahum huwa al-ghuluw fi salihin this is the chapter that talks about the reason that the sons of Adam became disbelievers. Why did Adam's children become disbelievers? In the authentic hadith, the Nabi Wasallam said that Allah Ta'ala said, the hadith al-Qudsi, inni khalaqtu ibadiya kulluhum hunafa. I created all of my servants, hanif, all of them, saying, la ilaha illallah. All of them, all of these presidents, their families, their wives, their children, the people they are over, all of them. Allah created them to say, La ilaha illallah. And then the shaitan came and took them off of their religion. How and why did Bani Adam go into Kufr and Shirk? Because they went overboard in the righteous people. That's how Shirk was introduced to Bani Adam. Your relatives, the people we know in this city of Birmingham, we have a lot of Muslims in this city. Many of them make shirk with Allah. The majority of the masajid in Birmingham, I don't say that Muslims are kuffar. The majority of the masajid that we know in Birmingham, they make making shirk with Allah. Why? Because they don't like Allah. They don't love Allah. They don't love His messenger. They hate the messenger. Hashallah. It's because of ghulu. They go overboard. So the imam, he said, the reason that the sons of Adam, the children of Adam became kuffar and they left their religion is because of extremism, being excessive in the salihin. Then he brought the statement of Allah Ta'ala in the Quran in Surah An-Nisa. Ya Ahl al-Kitab, la taghlaw fi dinikum, wa la taqulu ala Allahi illa al-haq. Innama al-Masih wa Isa ibn Maryam, Rasulullahi wa kalimatu al-qaha ila Maryam, wa ruhum minhu. فَآمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَلَا تَقُولُوا ثَلَاثٍ تَهُوا خَيْرٍ لَكُمْ إِنَّمَا اللَّهُ إِلَاهُ وَاحِدٍ سُبْحَانَهُ وَنْ يَكُونُ لَهُ وَلِدٍ لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ وَكِيلًا يا أهل الكتاب Don't have غلو Don't go overboard in your religion Verily the Messiah Isa ibn Maryam He is Rasulullah and he is the word from Allah that Allah gave to Maryam when Allah said, be, and he was. And he is the spirit from Allah that he gave to Maryam. 
So don't say one of three. Don't say Allah, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Don't say that. Intahu khairun lakum. It's better that you don't say that. Verily, Allah is one. Glory unto Allah that He would have a son. And verily, Allah is enough as a wakil. So this ayat of the Quran, Ikhwan, is an important ayat in that it shows Allah Ta'ala made it haram out of Bani Israel to have ghulu in their religion. And as he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we already took some of those ahadith. He said, Innaha sunan. Latatabi'unna sunan man kana qablukum shibram bi shibr wa dhara bi dhara. You people are going to follow Ahlul Kitab. Everything that they did, you're going to do it as well. And what they did was, they went overboard in Isa ibn Maryam. They went overboard in Uzair. They said both of them were the sons of Allah. And we go overboard and we say that the Prophet ﷺ, he is Allah reincarnate. Ali ibn Abi Talib is Allah reincarnated. And other than that. So this ayat that he brings, it goes to show, Ahlul Kitab, they had ghulu. And the ayat said, La taghlu fi dinikum. Don't go overboard in your deen. Don't have ghulu. Ghulu, going overboard, Jordan, brand spanking new Muslim, going overboard, look at the Muslims. This one sees Al-Imam Abu Hanifa as Al-Imam Al-A'zam. And he'll get upset if you tell him the truth about what Al-Imam Al-Bukhari said about Al-Imam Abu Hanifa. That one over there, that one over there, he'll get upset if you tell him that the imam that he follows or the madhab that he follows or the group that he follows, he'll get upset. If you said to someone in this religion, hey, I don't agree. I don't agree with the understanding of Usama bin Laden. I don't agree with that understanding. I don't agree with blowing up people and killing innocent people. Because the person goes overboard, he's, he thinks that you're against Islam. Don't go overboard in your religion. Don't allow yourself to raise any human being above the possibility of making a mistake or being criticized. Everybody in this audience, in this masjid, you have the haq to say, hey, you made a mistake. Hey, I don't agree with that. Then we have a discussion. But don't be of those people when someone comes and says, Green Lane Masjid, this Green Lane Masjid, do you say, La Allah. Don't be like that. Your religion is not Green Lane Masjid. Your religion is not the bricks in any institution. The religion is the Kitab of Allah and the Sunnah of the Nabi. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the way those companions understood that issue. So the ayat made it impermissible to make al ghulu in the religion. It's impermissible. The next dalil that the Imam brought was the statement of Allah Ta'ala concerning what happened with some of the righteous people of Nuh. Abdullah ibn Abbasin radiallahu anhu, who was the greatest companion of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abdullah ibn Abbas. He was a young man and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught him, he made dua, ask Allah, teach him the explanation of the Quran. Every young person, especially should make it his business to learn about Ibn Abbas, he's an inspiration. Goes to show that just because you're young doesn't mean that you don't have something to say. Doesn't mean that Everyone who's older than you, they're always right and you're always wrong. Ibn Abbas, he said about this ayat in Surah Nuh, Noah, Nuh. The Imam was reading some ayat about the dawah of Nuh for Salat al Maghrib from another surah. Allah mentioned, They said, don't abandon your gods. Don't abandon those gods that were mentioned. Suwa, Ya'uq, Ya'guth, Nasra. Don't abandon those gods. Abdullah ibn Abbas, he came and he said, the meaning of this ayat and the reason what it's talking about is during the time of Noah, Adam came, Adam's two sons got married to their two sisters because that was the religion at that time no other human beings so every time Adam's wife would have a baby the next they would come out twin boy girl boy girl so the boy was allowed to marry the girl who wasn't his direct twin because there's no other people that's their religion necessity 
as they begin to plentish, replenish, and they re they procreated and they started having more children, more children. Adam's two sons got into a dispute. One of them killed the other one. But he didn't make shirk. He didn't say that there's another God along with Allah. He became envious. He became jealous. He became angry. And he killed his brother. But he didn't make shirk. Adam's children were living. They were living. They were living. They were living. And then they started making more mistakes. Allah Azza wa Jal, he sent Noah to the people. The people weren't making shit. They were making mistakes. They weren't making shit. He sent Noah. And he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Awwalu Rusul Bu'itha ila Nas, Noah. He was the first messenger sent to the people. Adam was a prophet. Noah was a Rasul. He's the first one. Why did he come to the people? To tell the people, don't do this, don't get angry, don't do that, pray on time, give zakat, you have to fast, you have to go to hajj, you have to do this, be good to your mothers and your parents, be patient, all so forth and so on. But they weren't making shit. After that, there were five people, there were five people who was with Noah, five people. Abdullah ibn Abbas said, when those five people died, who were mentioned in this ayat, when they died, Iblis came to their people and told their people, make some statues and make some pictures for these people and then what happened after that hurry up hurry up then what happened after that he said that without the book because he knows the story shaitan came to the people and said hey you remember those righteous guys that were mentioned in this ayat make statues for them and put the names on the five statues draw pictures of them and write their names on the five pictures and put it up in the clubhouse put it up in your place where you gather to hang out so they did that and every time those people would come to that clubhouse and they would see those five religious people they would remember and they wouldn't make riba they wouldn't make nimima they wouldn't lie they wouldn't steal they would say stuck for Allah they would remember Allah because they saw those statues and they saw, they saw the pictures and then when they died, the ones who made them, the ones who manufactured them, Shaitan came, Ibn Abbas said, he came to the children, the next generation, and said, hey, you know your parents? They used to worship these idols. They used to worship these pictures, these righteous men. They used to worship them. And then the children started worshiping them. And that's how shirk was introduced to Beni Adam. That's how shirk, kufr. Prior to that, Adam's children, they made mistakes. Adam went to the tree that Allah told him don't go to that tree he went to that tree as a result of that he was expelled from Jannah he made a mistake Salawatullahi wasalam, but he didn't make shirk his children after him didn't make shirk they started making shirk as a result of pictures and as a result of statues so for that reason the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he took a strong position against statues he used to tell his companions whenever you see a statue break it Anytime you see a picture, deface it. He wasn't easy with that issue. That doesn't mean if you go to someone's house and he has two lions at the beginning of the door that you break the two lions of his house or the lions of your neighbor's house. You have to have some common sense because some people are like that. They'll go get a can of spray, spray paint and they'll spray the pictures on the police station. And they say, Prophet Muhammad said to do this. So you have to have some level of common sense and not look at this issue as being easy. So he brought that effort of Abdullah ibn Abbasin radiallahu anhu. After that, Ikhwani, he brought the hadith that's inside Bukhari and Muslim in which Umar radiallahu anhu was the narrator. Rasulullah, he told the people sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la tuturuni kama atrat al-nasara ibn Maryam إِنَّمَا أَنَا عَبْدُ اللَّهِ إِنَّمَا أَنَا عَبْدٌ فَقُولُوا عَبْدُ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولُهُ He said to the community, don't go overboard with me. Don't exaggerate with me on my behalf. Don't go overboard. Don't go overboard with me. He said that to everybody here, to his companions. لا تطروني كما أطرت النصارى ابن مريم Don't go overboard with me the way the Christians went overboard with the son of Maryam. He said, verily, I'm an abd. I'm an abd. 
So call me Abdullah and Rasulullah. The reason why this hadith has been mentioned, why is this hadith mentioned? What was the reason the Prophet said that to his companions? Why did he say that? Why did he say that? Don't go overboard with me. What, why did he say that? Why did he say that? Mubarak. Why did the Nabi tell his companions, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, don't go overboard in me. Don't be excessive. Go ahead. Huh? What happened? What happened? What, what happened? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in his house. And these people came and said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, oh, the best of us, and you're the son of the best of us. Come on out, we want to talk to you. Ya Rasulullah, you're the greatest one. You're the man. Come on out, we want to see you, and we want to talk to you. And they were praising him and praising him and praising him. When he heard that, he came out and he said, Atutruni, kama aturt nasara Ibn Maryam. Don't go overboard with me like you went. the people went overboard with Ibn Maryam. Which goes to show, Akhwani, the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a humble person. And he didn't like people praising him unnecessarily. And if people are praising you unnecessarily, calling you what you know you're not, and going overboard in the way that they deal with you, then you should stop them from doing that. The Nabi told the people, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he saw a man praising another man, he said, لَقَدْ كَسَرْتَ unuka." You broke his neck. In another hadith, he said, you broke his back. Oh, you're this and you're that and you're this and you're that. The Prophet said, don't do that to people. Praise them in their face to make them big and puffed up and pride and haughty. And the society that we're living in, the culture that we're living in, everybody, everybody wants to be more than his reality. So the Nabi was an individual, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who although he had every right, he's the Sayyid of Bani Adam. He's the best of Adam's children. But he didn't play that stuff. And that's one of the proofs how the hip-hop culture is diametrically opposed to Islam. Where the person is rapping and saying how great he is, how strong he is, how he's blah, blah, blah. that's what the Arabs used to do in Jahiriyyah. So there's a surah in the Quran, a chapter called Ashu'ara, the poets. The poets. They used to make that kind of poetry. And Allah revealed those ayat saying, hey, this is not from our religion. It's not from our religion. So when the people went overboard and they were praising him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, don't do that. The way the Christians did with Isa ibn Maryam, the son of Allah. He's the son of Allah. Why is he the son of Allah? Because he didn't have a father. Because he gave life to the dead. Because he caused that bird after fashioning it from clay and it flew away. Because he did this, caused the blind man to see, caused the deaf man to hear. He's Allah. He's the son of Allah. Well, what are you talking about? He did all of that by Allah's permission. The same way you're sitting there, by Allah's permission. The one who can't sit up, his spinal cord is jammed up. He's paralyzed. He's lying on his back. He sees you sitting up and he says, Oh, you're Allah because you can sit up. No one's going to say that makes sense. You're sitting up because Allah gave you the ability to sit up. Musa, he gave life to the dead because Allah gave him the ability. It's a miracle, no doubt. It's not something normal, but it doesn't mean that he is Allah. It doesn't mean that he should be praised and worshipped to that degree. So in this particular ayah, a few very important points. Number one, Rasulullah sallallahu wa sallam told the people innama an abd verily I am an, an abd an abd I'm a slave I'm the slave of Allah al ubudiyah servitude Prophet Muhammad did not have any problem with being an abd the malaika they don't have any problem with being an abd so for your information there are two names that the scholars differ one of these two names are the two greatest names of Allah. First one, Abdullah, Abdurrahman. And that's because there's no other name. There's no other name in the Quran where Allah Ta'ala connected a human being to one of his names, except he made him Abdullah or Abdurrahman. Those are the only two names. There's no other, no other name where Allah connected one of his creation to Abdul Ilah, Abdul Rahim. Abdul Subur, Abdul Qadus, only Abdullah and Abdurrahman, and that's it. He said about the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Subhanallah Asra bi Abdihi Laylam min al Masjid al Haram in al Masjid al Aqsa. 
glory unto Allah who took his abd, Rasulullah, Abdullah. He called him Abdullah. Abdullah. So many ayat. Allah Ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, إِنَّهُ لَمَّا قَامَ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ يَدْعُوهُ كَادُوا يُكُونُونَ عَلَيْهِ لِبَدَى In Surah Al-Jinn, Allah said, when our abd, Abdullah, when the Prophet Wasallam, when his abd, when he stood up to make dua to Allah, the jinn came and they surrounded him to listen. And they were on top of each other. So Allah called him Abdullah, no problem. Isa ibn Maryam, Isa ibn Maryam. Allah Ta'ala said that Isa said to the people, Qala inni Abdullah atani al-kitab wa ja'alani nabiyya. Isa said, I'm Abdullah. When he came and he started speaking in the cradle, they saw it was a miracle. He said, hey, hey, I'm Abdullah. Allah has given me the book and he made me a nabi. Don't go crazy. So that's the first one. Abd, Abd. The second one is Ar-Rahman. Those are the only two names in all of the Quran where Allah Ta'ala makes his servant Abdullah or Abdul Rahman. He made his servants from the righteous human beings, as he mentioned in Surah Al Furqan. Ibadur Rahman al Ladina Yam Shun Al Al Ardi Hawnam wa Ida Khatabahum al Jahiluna Kalu Salama. The Ibad of Ar Rahman. Abdullah and Abdul Rahman. جَعَلُوا الْمَلَائِكَةَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ عِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ إِنَافَ They made the malaika and the malaika they are the ibad of ar-Rahman. So in this hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi he told the people, I'm Abdullah, I don't have a problem with being Abdullah. So Abdullah, Abdul Rahman, the two best names that a person can name himself. Jordan, new Muslim. His name is Jordan. You don't have to change your name. You can keep that name forever if you want. But if you start looking for a name, the Prophet of Islam, Muhammad, said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the best name, most beloved name to Allah, Abdullah Abdul Rahman, the slave of Allah, the slave of Ar Rahman. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, didn't have any problems with some of the people. Hey, I'm Abdullah. May Allah Ta'ala make all of us Ibadullah, Ibadur Rahman. The Imam he brought the next Dalil Ikhwani from the book, and that is when the Messenger of Allah came out to the people and he said to them, Iyakum wal Guluwa, fa innama ahlaka man kana qablakum al Gulu. Beware of going overboard. Because the people who came before you, they were destroyed because they went overboard. The Yahud and the Nasara, Al Kitab. Iyakum wal Gulu. Beware of going overboard, being extreme. Being extreme in takfir, being extreme in making bid'ah, being extreme in ibadah, being extreme in the way you deal with people. You're an extremist, you're an individual who you're going overboard. Al ghulu, it means mujawizatul had, it means to go beyond the limits. And the other hadith, la tutruni al itra, al itra, it means it's a synonym. It's like ghulu. It means going over the limits. al itida Go beyond the boundaries. So he told his companion, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Verily those people were destroyed who came before you. And the reason why he mentioned that hadith, Ikhwani, the reason why he mentioned that hadith, is he was performing al hajj. And when he was going to throw the jamarat, the stones at the jamarat, he said, Ibn Abbas, give me some rocks. Seven. Ibn Abbas went and he brought him seven stones like this. He took the stones and he looked at the seven in his hand and he threw them on the ground and he said, beware of going to extremes. The people went before you went through extremes and so they were destroyed. He said, just get little rocks like this. The rocks like the size of the chickpea. You know, like a peanut, a peanut. Everybody knows a peanut here, right? The size of the peanut. That's all your rock have to be like, a peanut. And you just throw that rock at the jamara. Some people when they make hajj, they are sincere, but they go overboard. They think the bigger the thing that they throw, the better. So he'll look for big rocks. He'll look for his shoes. He'll look for... Some people will take coins at 20 pounds from the UK. Pounds. And he'll throw seven pounds at the thing. Because it's money and it's... 
That's not what Allah wants from you. Allah wants you to worship him in the way that he legislated. You could take seven pounds and give it to a poor person who's with you right there and then take seven rocks that's better for you. Those seven pounds don't make your throwing any better. It's ghulu. So the point, the point, ghulu is just not praying all the time. Ghulu is just not raising someone over what they deserve. You're this and you're that. We're in the World Cup right now. We're in the World Cup right now. This is the time that the people are playing the World Cup. Some of those famous people in the World Cup, if one of those individuals were to walk into one of the restaurants where these people are drinking kahwa and stuff like that, and he happened to walk into that place, the Muslims, the Muslims would freak out. The Muslims themselves would freak out if one of these famous soccer players walked into one of those places. Whereas Abu Bakr and Uthman Ali and those people, if one of those people would have walked in, they wouldn't have turned their eyes twice to them because their ibadah is with Allah. They say Allahu Akbar, everything, Allah, Allah. But when the people don't know what Tawheed, it's like this person who's famous. He's famous and he comes in. Person says when he sees him in a nice car, Lamborghini, whatever, they say, man, I really wish I had the life that that guy has. Abu Bakr and Uthman Ali, they didn't Hey, that's not to say that you can't like nice things. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, going overboard just doesn't mean raising people up. He gave them the big rocks, those big rocks, and then they be, that made him say, don't go overboard in your religion. Don't go overboard. Don't be excessive. Don't be on the internet overboard. Guy, he plays the PlayStation for eight hours. That's overboard. That's ghulu. You've gone overboard. You don't have anything better to do with your time except to be like that. And then the things that you say to people when you lose or when you win. So al ghulu is more than just worship or raising up people. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam in that hadith he made it clear to the people that going overboard is a destructive issue. The last hadith that the Imam brings is another easy hadith that clearly shows impermissibility of al ghulu in the religion. Abdullah bin Mas'ud and radiallahu anhu, he said that the Prophet says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, halaka al mutanatti'oon. Halaka al mutanatti'oon. Halaka al mutanatti'oon. He mentioned it three times. He said that the people who dig too deep, the people go too deep, they have been destroyed. And he mentioned it three times, three times. Why did he mention it three times? Why didn't he just say one time, everyone can hear him? Why did he mention it three times? So people can remember it. Yeah, but there's another important, more important reason than that. Why did he mention it three times? Why did the prophet repeat things three times? Huh? You're not sure. Mubarak, why did the Nabi mention things three times? He used to mention three times, things three times, not to waste his time, but to emphasize to the people. To emphasize to the people. When they heard him saying something three times, they knew that thing was important. So if you see something being mentioned multiple times in the Quran and the Sunnah, then it's important. And there's not a page of that Quran, if you turn each and every page, Allah is going to mention something about a Tawheed. He won't mention Prophet Muhammad's name every page. Prophet Muhammad is important. Every page of that Quran is going to mention a Tawheed. He's going to mention every page, the evil of a shirk, over and over. It's the central theme of the message of the Quran. So we say, Halaka al Mutanatti'un. Halaka al Mutanatti'un. That's an easy hadith that you guys can learn. Halaka, halaka al Mutanatti'un. Those people who dig too deep, they have been destroyed. They've been destroyed. So if you go and you are invited to someone's home and he gives you some dinner, he gives you some lunch, don't ask that man, where did this food come from? That hadith is talking about him. It's not your business where that food came from. Don't ask that question. Why are you asking that question? 
Why are you digging deep like that? You see someone and he has a brand new car, nice car. And you ask him, did you pay Reba for that car? It's not your business. What, what are you asking him that question for? That's not your business. Now, if it's from your business, your son, your wife, my son, he comes into my house or I come into my house and there is an Xbox, brand spanking new Xbox and there's some cartridges for the Xbox. I'm going to say, hey, where did this come from? Where did this come from? Because that's my business. You go into someone's house and he has a television, a plasma TV, and it's in the room where you're going to eat and it's turned off, it's switched off. Don't go in there and say, do you watch TV? That's not your business. The person who asks those questions and he busies himself with that kind of stuff, it's a problem. It's a problem. That doesn't mean a khwani that as brothers, as brothers, we don't have the right to be concerned with your brother when he's doing something that's clearly wrong. But you don't know what's going on. So don't go asking about that stuff. It's not your business. That is not your business. You have your own business. And you wouldn't want anyone doing that with you. Because it can be done with everybody here. It can be done with everybody here. Hey, hey. Uh, are you tough with your wife? Are you this and that, that? And you just start asking questions. That that's not your business. That's the meaning of that hadith. Those people who dig too deep. The khatib, he's going to give a khutbah. He's going to give a khutbah. And he starts to speak English on a high level where the people can't understand. What is he talking about? He's speaking in the way where there's takalluf. The prophet, he called that individual a man. He said, those people who talk like that are like the cows who move their tongues all around. They talk in order to puff themselves up to make the people think he's intelligent. He's making until after Ramadan. Next week, bithinillahi ta'ala, we'll deal with some of the ahkam of Ramadan, but some of the ahkam that many people don't pay attention to because these days people are going to be given a lot of talks about Ramadan and it's the same thing. We don't even have a problem with it being the same thing because the reminder benefits the believer and although you may know when you hear it again it is a reminder for you but there are other people who don't know but next week inshallah we're going to deal with some issues ahkam Zakaria before you ask your question why did the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ask people mention things three times why to put emphasis on it go ahead Zakaria Yeah, if you're fasting and you miss the Fajr prayer, you get up and you make up the prayer and you continue your fast. You continue your fast. Half it, Sab. Fadl. Yeah, no doubt. Atheism is a type of going overboard because it's outside of the realm. They have uh, exceeded the realm. All of those ayat of the Quran, subhanahu and yakun allahu walid. Glory unto Allah that he will have a son. Subhanahu wa ta'ala amma yushrikun. Glory unto Allah of what they are making shirk and what they are saying about him. So that subhana, as we mentioned before in our previous class, Prophet used to say it Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when they used to have a ta'ajjub when something was said that was amazing and it was far away he would say Allahu Akbar or Subhanallah someone would say something so the atheists and what they claim Benny Adam saying that there's no God Allah has a son that is going overboard also going overboard also going overboard is the one who doesn't practice the religion is going overboard going overboard in laziness that an individual won't ever pray after Allah gave him so many things so extremism is either the extreme to the right or the extreme to the left that's extreme in, extremism in the religion extreme is the one who's praying all the time, fasting all the time going overboard doing that but also extremism is also the one who doesn't do he's not doing anything, he's not doing enough he's overboard the other way Islam wants us in the middle. Al-insaf, al-i'tidal, right in the right in the middle.
تفضل يا اخي somebody over here had his hand up تفضل يا اخي موقوف and مرفوع موقوف and مرفوع this is terminology in the hadith sciences الموقوف is a statement that stops with the companion the companion he says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a companion he said Abdullah ibn Abbas he said about those ayats وَلَا تَذْرُنَّ وَقَالُوا لَا تَذْرُنَّ آلِيَتُكُمْ Abdullah ibn Abbas gave the tasfir of that ayah he never said Prophet Muhammad said that Ibn Abbas said that he never said Prophet Muhammad said that it's in Sayyid al-Bukhari and it's Mawquf Ibn Abbas is the one who said it stops with him Marfur means that the Prophet said it sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he came out of his mouth now that statement of Ibn Abbas about the reason those five men were mentioned although it came from Ibn Abbas and his Mawquf the ruling of it is Marfur the ruling of it is as if it came from the Nabi because he's saying something from the Ilm al ghaib and the companions would never say something from the Ilm al ghaib Sometimes a companion will say something that stops at him and it's wrong, it's rejected. Abdullah ibn Umar said, Salat al-Duha is an innovation. Don't do it. That's mawquf. And it's wrong. Because the Prophet told us to make Salat al-Duha. So sometimes a companion will say a statement that's correct. Sometimes he'll stay, say a statement that's incorrect. When he says a statement that's correct and it's from the ilm al ghaib then it's as if the Prophet said it and we take it as a ruling that it came from the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because the companions would never say something from their own mind about the ilm al ghaib and that's the respect and the honor that the people of the Sunnah have for the companions Ibn Abbas said that the kursi ayatul kursi the kursi is the place of the two feet he never said Prophet Muhammad said that but we believe that because he would have never said that from his ijtihad so that's the difference between mawquf and marfur some mawquf are authentic statements of the companions some mawquf are not authentic and some mawquf have the ruling of being marfur and marfur is what the prophet said some of what is said is authentic some of what is said is not authentic it's not a true hadith not a true hadith so that's the difference between the two and Allah is a'lan a'lam anybody have a question anybody else there's a lot of ikhtilaf ikhwani between concerning the difference between a nabi and a rasul a nabi and a rasul all of them all of the definitions they have some problems all of them have some problems some people said that and the Nabi is the one who revelation didn't come to him. But Allah Azawajal called Musa a Nabi and a Rasul and revelation came to him. So it's a problem. I think the closest position and it's also a problem is that the Rasul, the Nabi is the one who came to his people with a legislation and the Rasul is the one who came with a new legislation a new one abrogating what they were doing before so the Nabi is the first one he comes with a revelation and he comes to his people with a Sharia with a Sharia and they have to do what he said and then the Rasul is the one who comes with a new Sharia with a new Sharia but again it's also a problem it's also a problem because Musa was a Nabi called a Nabi and a Rasul so it's one of those difficult things that the scholars have ikhtilaf about the scholars but there is a difference between the two can you give us an ayah where it shows the difference between a Nabi and a, that there is a difference between wa ja'alahullahu Nabi and wa Rasula can you give us one of those ayah the fact that the Nabi said in the hadith that Adam was the first Nabi and Noah was the first Rasul. And there are ayat in the Quran that make that distinction as well. Okay, Ikhwani, Fadl ya akhi, Fadl. Salama. Hold up, I have to talk to you. I'm going to go to Lund, uh, Darby.
Sahabi, I got to talk to you this way. I have something to give to Abu Hassan the Imam. I took it by accident. It's important. I'm sorry about that. I, I, he sent me a text message. Now that's a good question. You know, Ikhwani, concerning these products, our ummah is an ummah that is ummi. Ummi. The Prophet said that about our ummah. Inna ummatun ummiyun la laktub wa la nahsub. He said, this ummah is an ummah that's illiterate. We don't count and we don't read. So the vast majority of Muslims in this dunya, they can't count, they can't read. They're illiterate. That hadith is not encouraging you young people to be illiterate. You have to learn your religion. You have to learn how to count. You have to learn how to read. But if you go to different parts of the Muslim world, in Arabia, in Africa, many of our people don't read. So the brother's asking, when you go, can I make that hijab? Now, if there are some things that we just know, some of our wives, they just know some of that stuff. They know about the animal, what is it called? Huh? Yeah, the gelatin, they, they know stuff like that. Okay, no problem. She knows about gelatin. She knows about animal this and that. They know about certain things. But some of that stuff, you have to be a chemist to understand some of that language. A chemist, a chemist. So what are you going to do? He's going to go home and he's going to put all of that on his internet table, write it all down, and then go to Google. And he's going to find out every single one of those things, what it means. I knew people, when he, when he found out that pictures were haram. He used to leave his money in his car, inside of his car. He used to leave his money, all of his cash money, inside of the car because he didn't want to bring the money in the house because it had pictures on it. Is that what Allah wants from you? Allah doesn't want that from you. If your car gets stolen, your money is gone. Your money is gone. So I'm forced now, I'm forced now. Then somebody come and say, yeah, but the big sheikh in Pakistan was the sheikh of the Sunnah. His name is uh, Sheikh Zubair Ali Zai. He died recently. May Allah's rahmah be upon him. He took his picture off of his passport and he insisted, I'm not going to have any picture on my passport. And they let him go. The government let him go. I heard that story. I don't know if that's true. But don't come and use that as a dilil. That's not a dilil. Did that sheikh... When I, I can't see him going to Saudi Arabia and them letting him Saudi Arabia without a picture on his passport. I can't see it. You tell me that story. I'm not the kind of person who just rejects everything and I'm not the type of person going to accept everything. I can't see him traveling to Saudi Arabia without a picture on his passport. So that's not a delil. We have to look at the maqasid of the sharia and the religion came to make things easy. Hey, let me talk to that brother, Khwani, because uh, I have something really important for their community that I took by accident. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ونسأل الله تعالى توفيق السداد والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Though we go after after, yeah yeah.